She's M A M I E. Yeah, she reads to me. She reads a story from a book or two. She's M A M I E. Mammy's Corner! Hello, my littles! Welcome to Mammy's Corner, and I'm Mammy. <laughs> How are you? Oh, it is so good to see you! I missed you! Oh, you're so sweet. It is time to do our affirmations. Are you ready? Are you ready? All right, let's do the first one. Ready? I am loved. Are you loved? Yes, you are. But let's say it again really loud. I am loved. Good job. Now, who loves you? God loves you. That's right. Who else loves you? Mammy loves you. And don't you go forgetting that. Now for the next one. I am good. You are so good. But say it louder. Ready? I am good. Good job. Now for the last one. I am kind. Are you kind? You are. All right, let's say it loud one more time. I am kind. Good job, my littles. I am so proud of you. Now, it is time for Mammy to read a book. But before I do, make sure you sit in your favorite chair. Get all nice and comfy. Maybe get a favorite blanket or a favorite pillow you want to squeeze or a favorite stuffed animal that you love or sit with your favorite person, mommy, daddy, mammy, <laughs> and let's get started on this. But before I get started reading the, this, down below, if you haven't subscribed already, please do so, but down below, make sure you take that remote and arrow down and hit that thumbs up and let mammy know that you like my stories, because that tells me that you like my stories. And if there's something special that you want, have an adult go to my email, which is mammyscorner at gmail.com mammyscorner at gmail.com and tell them you want to, me to read a special book just for you and I will say your name. Are you ready? Are you ready? All right, let's get started. Look, Sage wants to be here. Hi, Sage. Oh, what a good doggie. She wants to listen, too. Mammy is going to read Zootopia! Day's Talent, where anyone can be anything. Little Judy Hops, which is her right there, dreamed of being a police officer in Zootopia when she grew up. After all, the city's motto was, anyone can be anything. What do you want to be when you grow up? When she was old enough, Judy left her family's farm, right there, to attend the police academy. It was tough. But Judy surprised everyone by graduating at the top of her class. Yay! Mayor Lionheart proudly announced that Judy would be the first bunny to join the Zootopia Police Department. What? The first bunny? Wow! Judy set out for the big city. There was a place for everyone in Zootopia. It had hot, dry neighborhoods for desert animals. Cool neighborhoods for animals that liked cold weather, along with many other places. When she arrived downtown, Judy was thrilled to see animals of all kinds, big and small, living peacefully side by side. Aww! Judy was the first and only small mammal working at the ZBD, which is Zootopia Police Department. At the morning meeting, Chief Bogo gave out the assignments. We have 14 missing mammal cases, he told the officers. Those cases went to big animals. Bogo didn't believe a bunny could do difficult police work, so he gave Judy parking duty. You know what parking duty is, right? This is parking duty. Disappointed, Judy still worked hard. When she noticed a suspicious-looking fox, right down here, entering a cafe, she followed him. <gasps> Doo -doo -doo. The fox, Nick Wilde, was trying to buy an enormous jumbo pop for his son who was wearing an elephant costume. See, there he is right there. According to his dad, the little fox actually wanted to be an elephant. The clerk didn't want to serve two small foxes. Judy convinced the clerk to give Nick a pop and even paid for it herself. Aw, that was nice of her, wasn't it? Ooh, elephant doesn't look happy. Uh-oh. If you want to be an elephant when you grow up, you be an elephant, Judy told Little Fox, because this is Zootopia, 
Anyone can be anything. Very nice, huh? Ah. It turned out that Nick didn't want the Jumble Pop for his son at all. Instead, he used it to make small pops that he sold to little animals. Worse, his <clears throat> son was actually a grown-up, though small, fox. Judy had been tricked! <gasps> oh, no! Shocked and angry, Judy confronted Nick when she learned the truth. Nick didn't care. It's called a hustle, sweetheart, the fox told her on the street. He added, you can only be what you are. Nick pointed at himself and at Judy. Sly fox, dumb bunny. I am not a dumb bunny, cried Judy. Nick looked at Judy's feet. Right, he said, and that's not wet cement. Oops, uh-oh, what's going to happen now? Look, she, oh man, she got stuck in cement. Oh my goodness. But that doesn't make her dumb, does it? No, that's not nice to say dumb, is it? Don't say dumb. Judy wanted the chance to prove herself by doing real police work. So the next day when she heard a pig shouting about a robbery, she jumped into action. Hop, uh, what do you mean hop? She should be hopping into action, right? Because <laughs> she's a buddy, oh my goodness. Judy chased a thieving weasel into little Rodentia, which was built especially for little mammals. The thief grabbed a donut-shaped sign and tossed it at her. Judy stopped it from crushing a tiny shrew and used it to catch the weasel instead. Oh, good job, Judy! Woo! What do you think, little? She did a good job? She did a good job, didn't she? Chief Bogo was not impressed. Judy had caused quite a bit of damage to little Rodentia, and it looked as if all the weasel, as if all the weasel had stolen was a case of moldy onions. Being a farm bunny, Judy knew the case contained flower bulbs, not onions. But the chief didn't care. <gasps> oh, no. He doesn't look happy, does he? Uh-oh, I wonder what's going to happen. Let's find out. Suddenly, an otter rushed into the station. Her husband, Emmett Otterton, was missing. Over Chief Bogle's protest, Assistant Mayor Bellwether insisted that Judy get the assignment. The sheep winked and explained, Us little guys really need to stick together. The case didn't have many clues. See, she's looking for clues. Do do do. But Judy knows the last known photo of Emmett showed him eating one of Nick's pops. <gasps> what? Whoa, look at that. Judy tracked down Nick and threatened to report his hustling unless he helped her. Uh oh, he's laughing. What's going to happen? Would she report him? Is he going to help her? <gasps> Let's find out. Together, the pair learned that Emmett was last seen in the car of Mr. Big, an Arctic shrew who was a dangerous crime boss. Their visit to Mr. Big wasn't going well until Mr. Big's daughter recognized D Judy. She's the buddy that saved my life yesterday. Oh, look. A thankful Mr. Big released the pair and explained that Emmett Otterton was his florist. One night, as the otter was being driven home in Mr. Big's car, he had gone crazy. Ripped up my car, scared my driver half to death, and disappeared into the night, Mr. Big informed them. <gasps> what? No. <gasps> what happened? Nick and Judy tracked down Mr. Big's driver, a jaguar who lived high in the trees in the Rainforest District. He told Judy and Nick how Emmett Otterton had changed without warning. He was down on all fours, a savage, described the jaguar. He just kept yelling about night howlers. Then, without warning, the jagu jaguar's expression changed. His eyes had a crazed look. Judy had never seen anything like that before, and run, she cried, as the jaguar lunged and chased after them. Judy managed to cuff the jaguar's leg to a post, though she and Nick tumbled to the ground. Whoa. Mysteriously, the jaguar had disappeared by the time Chief Bogo arrived. Judy had told the chief she thought the jaguar had gone savage, though she wasn't sure how. This isn't the Stone Age. Animals don't go savage, scoffed the chief. He thought Judy was simply afraid of the larger animal. 
Nick knew Bogo was wrong. The fox didn't have to keep helping Judy, but now he wanted to. Oh, that was nice that he wants to now. Phew. Together, the two paid a visit to the assistant mayor's office. There, with help from Bellwether, they saw traffic camera footage that showed that the jaguar had been picked up by wolves and taken to a mysterious building on the outskirts of the city. Judy looked at the wolves. Night howlers, she said, remembering what the otter had been yelling. Judy and Nick found the building, an old crumbling hospital, and sneaked inside. Shh, the missing animals were all locked up there, and they had all turned savage. <gasps> the pair heard voices. Mayor Lionheart was talking to a doctor, a honey badger. What does Chief Bogle think? the doctor asked. Chief Bogle doesn't know, the mayor answered. And we're going to keep it that way. Judy recorded the whole conversation on her cell phone. <gasps> Smart girl, huh? What's going to happen now? Let's find out. Judy gave the video to Bogo. The chief couldn't believe the mayor had kidnapped citizens and hidden the savage predators away to keep this problem a secret. Together, Bogo and Judy arrested the mayor. I did it for the city, protested the lion. Oh, wait, let me try that again. I, <clears throat> I did it for the city, protested the lion. Is that better? I hope so. Assistant Mayor Bellwether became the new mayor. The bunny was famous for solving the case of the missing mammals. Judy appreciated Nick's help and asked him to apply to the ZBD. Again, it's Zootopia Police Department. And become her partner. Later, at a conference or press conference, Judy pointed out that all the animals that had been gone savage were predators. No one knew what was causing the animals to go savage or if it would happen again. Nick was hurt. It's probably best if you don't have a predator as a partner, the fox muttered angrily. Oh, let me start again. Ready? Nick was hurt. It's probably best you don't have a predator as a partner, the fox muttered angrily giving her back the application for the police force. Oh, no. Oh, he's hurt. How is she going to fix it? Life in Zootopia quickly changed. Animals who were prey became suspicious of their predator neighbors. Blaming herself, Judy resigned from the ZBD and returned to her family's farm. There, she learned something new. The toxic flowers that farmers were planting to keep bugs away were sometimes called night howlers. <gasps> what? Night howlers? Their bulbs looked like onions, but an animal would go crazy if it ate one. Judy raced back to the city to find Nick. Whoa, what is she going to tell Nick? Let's find out. She finally found him under a bridge. Night howlers aren't wolves, Judy informed Nick. They're toxic flowers. Someone is targeting predators on purpose and making them go savage. Although Judy had worked to convince Nick, excuse me, although Judy had to work to convince Nick, he finally agreed to team up with her again. With help from Mr. Big, they found the flower bulb thief. The weasel admitted he'd been selling the bulbs to someone at an abandoned subway station. <gasps> Whoa, who is it? What? Let's find out. At the station, Judy and Nick found a secret lab. Rams were turning the flowers into toxic pellets. A predator hit with a pellet would go savage. <gasps> Judy and Nick escaped with evidence. A case containing a dart gun and the night howler toxic pellets. They knew that somehow they had to catch the animal behind the whole plan. <gasps> Do you know who it is? <gasps> Let's find out. As they headed for the ZBD, again, Zootopia Police Department, to gather the evidence, the new mayor, Bell Weather, stopped them. Judy, called the sheep. I'll go ahead and take that case now. Surrounded by rams from the lab, Judy had no choice but to hand over the toxin. It turned out Bell Weather was behind the whole scheme. <gasps> she wasn't about to let Judy and Nick turn her in either. To get rid of them, 
bellwether darted Nick with a blue pellet. Oh, no. I'm scared. That means that he turned savage. Oh, what's going to happen? Nick growled savagely at Judy. You think it prey fair predators, you'll stay in power? Judy shouted at Bellwether. It won't work! Fear always works, answered Bellwether, and I'll dart every predator in Zootopia to keep it that way. Suddenly, Nick stood up. He wasn't going savage. The pair had substituted harmless blueberries for the toxic pellets, and Judy had recorded Bellwether's confession. It's called a hustle, sweetheart, Judy told the shock sheep. Yay! Bellwether went to jail in Zootopia, returned to normal. Yay! Doctors cured the predators who had been affected with the night howler toxin. Peace was restored. Best of all, Nick joined the ZBD. Now he and Judy were a real team. Nick still wasn't sure he believed that anyone can be anything, but big or small, he now believed anyone could make a difference, even him. The end. Wow! Judy, the first bunny ever in the police department, solved the case! Yay! Good job to Judy, huh? So, what do you want to be when you grow up? Do you want to be a police officer? Do you want to be a doctor? What do you want to be? Ah, you know, if you tell an adult to go to Facebook of Mammy's Corner, you can have your adult tell me what you would like to be when you grow up. And I would love to know that. I would love to know what you want to be when you grow up. Maybe a race car driver, you know, or whatever. Anyways, that's the end of the book. I hope you liked it. Again, down below, take your remote and arrow down and hit that thumbs up and let me know that you like this story. I love it when you tell me that you love my stories. All right, that's the end. Thank you so much for listening to my story. And if there's a special book that you want, tell your adult to email Mammy at mammyscorner at gmail.com so I can find a book that you want me to read to you. All right, so who loves you? Yes, God loves you. Who else loves you? Mammy loves you. Shh. But Mammy loves you bestest. Until next time, my littles, be good and be kind.